Hi, we're here at Thai Inflect 2018. I'm Sarah Feldman. We're here with Atul Singh. So Atul, what do you think of TyCon? Uh, it's um, a lot bigger than in the past, um, and I'm uh, enjoying it a lot. Uh, there seems to be good energy. Uh, so um, uh, it's jolly good fun. Great, well, we're glad to have you here. What, what trends have you noticed uh, since arriving? Well, it's a lot bigger, there's more energy, um, there seems to be more diversity. Uh, so congratulations to Thai for uh, evolving this and improving this and growing uh, their conference. Thank you. And what do you think of some of the trends that we're seeing in analytics today with, say, Cambridge Analytica and Facebook? <laughs> well, uh, let's uh, take a step back uh, and look at what's happening to data. Uh, you have uh, semi-monopolies now. In fact, New York Times called uh, the big um, uh, five uh, companies the frightful five. And who are they? They are Amazon, they are Apple, they are Facebook, uh, they are Google, and Microsoft. And really, it's, um, it's Facebook that is uh, the biggest uh, uh, danger to democracy today. And why do I say so? Well, because Facebook owns too much data and everyone puts everything about their life on Facebook, uh, and um, they constantly bombard you with notifications. So people's attention spans have gone down. Uh, people's uh, desire for a dopamine hit by being noticed has gone up. And um, uh, Facebook is, at the end of the day, a profit-maximizing company. The fiduciary duty of Mark Zuckerberg is to generate ever greater profits for his shareholders, which means he's got to sell the data, which means that people like Cambridge Analytica, which is now shut shop, can abuse your personal information, which means that those who hire people like Cambridge Analytica, who could be anyone from Donald Trump uh, to the Congress party in India, can manipulate you um, in a very sinister way. So. Uh, what is happening with analytics right now is an intrusion of privacy, is uh, a destabilizing of democracy, and uh, is uh, a degrading of individual choice. So if you were to ask me, um, what do I think? I think Facebook is fundamentally in balance, um, bad for the world, despite whatever good it does. And uh, the world of Emperor Mark Zuckerberg is terrible for editors like me because we produce the content we don't get any advertising because all advertising goes to emperor zuckerberg obviously no one wants to pay so the revenue model of journalism is gone in 2014 the pew research report said there were five jobs in public relations for every job in journalism today that number is seven to eight is to one so great it's it's a brave new world and uh Emperor Mark Zuckerberg can perhaps follow Donald Trump into the White House. <laughs> well, my understanding is that Facebook's more in the ads, you know, industry, and it is, but it is also deeply into targeting those ads. So what that means is that to target those ads, it has to dig deeper and deeper into your data, including have photo recognition, and the whole. Uh, um, uh, you know, danger of Facebook is that 85% of the people worldwide are accessing the internet through Facebook or Facebook-owned platforms, one of which is WhatsApp. WhatsApp is deeply dangerous in countries like India and uh, Myanmar. For instance, um, I don't know if you uh, read what the UN representative said, and the UN representative found that the ethnic cleansing of Rohingyas uh, was facilitated by WhatsApp. In in India, riots begin because, let's say you have a Muslim fanatic. He says that uh, the Hindus are, are uh, um, throwing pigs into a mosque. Let's say there is a Hindu fanatic. They claim that the Muslims are uh, cutting cows in front of their temples. And the rumor swells around. And of course, it helps both these fanatics to get votes, to get support, to peddle hate. and. Uh, no one can do anything about it. In fact, Facebook doesn't even answer to letters from Indian authorities because uh, the payment system is in Singapore and the data is in Ireland. So really what has happened is that Emperor Mark Zuckerberg is answerable to no one and no one at all. And because congressmen in this country and 
representatives in India need money to fight elections, and he's got all the money. They dare not oppose him. Well, it'll be really interesting to see what happens. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you.